fantastic. Yeah. What a great idea. <laughs> it's always good. It's always good to be recording. So, uh, <laughs> we, so we, we could actually show somebody else's butt for us. Um, David, thank you for being here on the podcast. Truly, from the bottom of my heart, this means the world that we get to share some of your experiences and what you do in your line of work as a Hayoka, um, in terms of healing, in terms of curing so much mental illness in the way that you do. Um, obviously, we've worked together and it's been one of the most transformational experiences I've ever had. So I'm just really grateful that we get to share this with the world. And I trust that for those who are in resonance with it, they will feel what is transmuted between us, transmitted between us. And yeah, just thank you and welcome. Thank you, right back to you. Thanks, mm -hmm. Eames. Um, okay, as we agreed, just before we pressed the record button, um, I, will ask, I will ask the questions and answer them myself in relation, <laughs> so it'll, yeah, so it'll, um, being the, by my very nature, a hey okay, I'll start at the beginning. I was born backwards. So everything, everything in this world to me, by my very essence and nature, the way I was born, I see things before most other people do. I see the end before I see the start, really. So what that means is whenever I read something or watch something my mind automatically goes to the end of the story it actually goes to what is the purpose here what is the the purpose for counseling nlp psychotherapy what are these supposed uh, solutions purported solutions to the problem of mental illness. And anyone who asks that question straight away would know they're not solutions because a solution is something that resolves a problem. And the things that have been sold to humanity are intended clearly to not resolve the root cause of mental illness which is, according to the last 30 years of psychiatric research, trauma and or child abuse or adult abuse. And they know that. So the people who have been bought off, the psychotherapists, psychiatrists, they've been paid off, the scientists who've done that research and proven beyond all doubt that trauma and child abuse and adult abuse is the root cause of all, all mental and physical illness, they're only treating the bad feelings, the anxiety, the worry about the, the future, the sadness about the past, the suicidal thoughts, I want to get out of this body. Now, the addiction, adding diction, which are thoughts about a particular behavior, habit, craving. Once we disconnect the feeling, the addiction, the craving, the pleasure feeling can't be created in the body anymore, which significantly has nothing to do with the gambling, the drugs, the alcohol, um, the cigarettes or anything else outside of us, which we've been misinformed is the problem. It isn't. It's the mind's repeated subconscious thoughts programmed condition responses put there in the first seven years to any particular incident event interaction that the little boy or little girl in the machine at the back of the head here the subconscious mind responds without the soul knowing because why because in the first seven years this is the only fully the brain stem is the only fully formed brain in a young, in a young uh, body or person. So as a result, when the conscious mind, the prefrontal lobe cortex working memory of the brain becomes fully formed around age nine, 10, depending on the maturational and the physiological development of each individual, 
when that becomes fully formed, we thereby starts a inner battle between the emotional response of the subconscious mind, which always wins. Hence the phrase by Aristotle, show me the boy at seven and I'll show you the man's emotional responses, unless he meets a Hayoka, of course. And of course, once, once that inner battle takes place, we've got certain interplays throughout our life, typified by the January New Year's resolution of the conscious mind saying, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have the new start. And the little boy, the little girl says, oh, you know, you're not fat boy. You can't say no to, do you want fries with that, sir? And it's the, that's the interplay that society has embedded the people who run society, the people who run the food industry, who put the MSG in there and the synthetic sugars in the highly addictive foods and drinks that activate certain neurological and physiological false triggers and signals to the brain to hit false serotonin and insulin and produce in the body false insulin within the pancreas when we have to a Red Bull, which creates a real thirst within 30 minutes, which, which is very profitable for some organizations and industries, but not very beneficial for the, the person and their body. But they don't care. And they don't care about the side effects in drugs. They don't care about everything else. The gambling, you know, there's no links as the uh, CEO of the Gambling Commission between uh, the repeated adverts in the media and the prevalence of um, problem gambling. There's no prevalence at all, but anybody who produces any research will tell you there is. When anything, when the prefrontal lobe is cut, repeated news items of the same lying narrative people end up wearing masks when there is no scientific evidence to suggest that it would make any scientific point rational scientific evidence to prove that it makes sense to do so but if you're told a lie often enough joseph goebbels it, people will believe it no matter and it has to be a big lie They'll believe it because most people would never conceive of such making such a big lie because you'd never get away with it. So that's briefly how the the nature of my being when I came out of this out of my mum's womb, I see things from a totally different viewpoint. I was conditioned like the rest of us through the satanic system in education. But thankfully, because of my dyslexic mirror mind, it, it disconnects from the, the rational. So I don't have a controlling rational mind. So particularly when I was a child, so as a consequence, it was seen as... <laughs> a quite a contrary child so I'd, I'd be at home my I'd be very um boisterous because of my liberal parents who'd be laissez-faire if you like and let me be quite creative to quote unquote me dad he was always different and when I was at school I'd be quite um quiet and submissive because of the the difference in personalities, you, you tend to get <laughs> typified by the uh, one parental parent's evening. <laughs> Mrs. Henderson said to me when I was about five or six, it just stands out. She said, what a lovely, quiet child you have. And my father just grabbed a piece of paper from the desk and went, have you got the right child? <laughs> because, <laughs> because the Hayoka was very clever at 
mimicking and creating opportunities to see the difference in personalities. My social skills, because of my social condition of looking after my grandparents from the age of six onwards and emptying commodes for elderly, my elderly grandparents who were infirm in one way or another, and my responsibilities of cooking meals at six and seven as well, hot meals for my parents and grandparents, um, meant I, for a young child, I was very responsible. So I was mature beyond my years, really. Um, and so my contrary mind allowed me the opportunities to be treated different by adults. They, I would have adult conversations and I would have, I have very few friends. And even now I've, I don't find it difficult to socialize with people who I perceive as immature, who want to talk about things which don't interest me. I don't have those conversations I, as or typified by my wife's phrase. You don't do small talk do you David when we first met and I went no I, I, my mind just goes I just can't talk about ooh, a, a wonderful holiday resort where I just lay on the beach for two weeks I just it just doesn't interest me I have to have a stack of books and I'm quite happy then to sit in the shade and anybody who uh, watches this live would see from my pasty complexion they would they would know that um so by by birth anybody born backwards breach um, has got a fair to middling chance of being a hay ochre. Um, but it was only, so I went through the normal schooling process, went to grammar school, despite not doing 11 plus because of my natural ability to play football um, quite well, despite my Diddy size, I was known as Diddy David and um, played for the local um, and local schools and England schools and the county Lancashire um, schools. But then I met my first introduction to really the, the first signpost really of trauma, which is um, being around paedophiles. At the age of eight, my nana said to me, if you ever meet anybody who um, gives you a bad feeling just by looking at them, um, you walk away but you make sure you give them a stare to make them aware that you've seen them. And four years later, I met Barry Bennell and couldn't get in a, out of my neighbor's car and into his car to go for a football trial. Sadly, my best friend did at that age. Um, and then I met another guy, Francis Roper and another trial. And again, <laughs> just wasn't able to, um, feel comfortable enough to actually listen to anything he said. I just walked home from the trial. Um, and it was passed off because I never really spoke about it to anybody. As you do as a kid, you just keep it to yourself. You just think you've done the right thing because you've listened to your, your nana's uh, instructions. You just keep away when you when somebody gives you a bad feeling, you just walk off. And that's what I've always done. And she saved me life, really. She stopped my football career. Um, and for those years following 30, 37 years after I worked out why I'd been spending the previous 17 years in football um, helping footballers clear their trauma their mental illness quite subconsciously I was doing it um, yeah just going back a couple of years uh, earlier five years after a, a road traffic accident um, two of my friends best friends died unfortunately, um, killed outright by being hit by a, an oncoming car while they were pushing my broken down car on the M6 in uh, January 2000. And five years later, my best friend came back as a spirit guide 
Um, I still laugh when I'm saying it every time because it's just incredulous to actually just say it like I'm just saying, yeah, there's two sugars in my tea, please. Well, I don't even have sugar in my tea. But he, uh, just saying it so much for a fact because for years I kept that s- silent because um, I thought people would think I'm even crazier than I thought I already thought I was after experiencing what I did experience all my life, just crazy things, um, which I never spoke about because nobody else did so i just kept it quiet um from seeing quadratic equations just in the third eye um held um my left arm was tied behind my back was seen as evil in the 1970s um as i say i was a a seven year old and the headmaster at the time at uh, the junior school was at he had me with electrodes i didn't know they were just had wired me up and had uh, whatever experts they were called at that time uh, trying to understand why i could write quadratic equations i just wrote them down and i was doing it at university i was writing cubes cubes out and i didn't realize the geometric um significance of geometry and, and all that but it was just like a symbolic code waiting to be activated by the chosen traumatic experience, which would wake up the Hayoka to other people who had studied what a Hayoka was. And then the moment two or three people, only quite recently, really, 2017, said, oh my God, you're a Hayoka. And I went, what? And other people had said in 2012, the same thing. They just said, oh, you're a jester, a fool. You're a sacred clown. When I was at Bhutan Monastery and they told me, my behaviors are akin to the um the sacred Hayoka in um who helped the the master buddha become enlightened using this process that i've shared with you and about two thousand people in the last 18 months or so since coming to prominence via mark atwood jck nick veniamin and charlie ward who've aligned me up with every beautiful empathic light worker who knew that there was something out there that would able, enable them to actually rise out of their trauma and set them on the path to helping others come out of the, um, the matrix programming. Um, so I've mentioned quite a bit there. I've tried to pack in as much as possible. And then obviously then we can sort of pin down anything that sort of appeals to um, yourself to actually explore further. But that generally is my truncated version as to who I am as a shamanic Hayoka empath and the background as to of how I understand from what other people have told me what the psychics have told me randomly over the years oh my god your connections to the Buddha are incredible I haven't got a clue what this message is because it's coming from a, a different part part of the spirit realm which I, I don't I usually get oh your brother needs to sort himself out with his drinking I usually get that message that I, I'm getting your link to the higher realms and what you do, David, is off the scale. And I haven't got a clue what they're saying. Can I just relay this message? Your process helped uh, people become free from trauma. Does that make sense, David, what you're doing with the football teams? Does that? And I go, yeah, I guess so. Um, hmm. I think that's a, a really from from my perspective on people perceiving me as very different um that would give a broad brush intro as to who i am where i've been how i awoken to being told i'm a hayoka then having to do the research myself and then when i do the, did the research he was like oh my god i'm all of those things and probably a little bit more yeah i think dif- different 
is definitely one of the I'd say the key words that encapsulates all of this because from the moment I met you, it was really I didn't know what to expect, but it was definitely different from whatever I thought I did expect. And I would say, and I was saying this to you before we we started, the the big domino for me was up until we met, I had the belief that trauma was this process that you almost chip away at in tiny little nooks over your entire lifetime and really that it's not necessarily something that you can completely clear but you can make progress towards it that's what i believe yeah and when we had our session which was just one session that was what all we needed I experienced the complete opposite to that. And so I would love for you to talk about that because I think that is a very common conception for people who are understanding what trauma is and now they're maybe on their journey to heal. Um, and I think through that understanding, it could really help people break through and realize that actually, no, you can, you can shift it in yeah. an instant. Yeah, it three three years ago I was at uh, university. I, I I was under the naive misconception that I would need to get this process accredited by Satan. I mean, the universe cities controlled by Satan, who ensure that any bright light intellect has it dimmed immediately when they stick a satanic mortar board on the head to block off the light from shining to source, which is the true meaning of the mortar board on the head, closing off the chakra. Um, and I was there four weeks. And in those four weeks, I <laughs> was preparing for my first assignment typical Hayoka. I'm getting the assignment over in the first couple of weeks, doing the research straight away. That's backwards of me. Most people, students, are sort of panicking and enjoying the life. I was there with clear, conscious intent, which goes back to the start of this podcast where that's a Hayoka. I go to the end, right? What's the end game here? I get to the... I was looking at the abstract results in all the research journals straight away. And that, quite ironically, <clears throat> universally, godlike in its... Uh, conclusion in just the first few days at the university when I got hold of the um, exam or assessment question or assignment questions for the first one which was the addictive pain stress cycle and interestingly it stated in every single journal of research that the root cause of all mental illness was trauma and yet all the research papers were all blocked from being used as evidence ever again. So it's as if they allowed them to produce the evidence and then paid them off to keep quiet about it. Three weeks later, I'm sat round the dining room table with one student who said to me, what is it you do, David? I said, I've worked out you can, the human mind can delete its own trauma. And the root cause of trauma, according to the last three, three weeks research I've done, and Billy Wiz is, um, is trauma and child abuse. He said, oh, I was abused. I went, all right, okay. Round the table, he was quite, candid with his uh, response to that piece of information I gave him. And he said, uh, how does it work? So I said, oh, I said, it's quite simple. You delete it yourself. I said, you don't even have to tell me. All you have to do is do this process. So he said, okay, will you try it? So I said, yeah, of course. I said, me, you just give me your permission there. I said, you, you want to delete it. That's what I have to do. It's otherwise, um, I'd be accused of uh, doing something against your will. I said, uh, I'm not clearing it. You are. He went, right. 
so while I was having my cheese and onion uh, sandwich, we, we deleted it. He said, yeah, it's gone. I went, yeah, no, that's why I'm here. So strangely enough, two days later, he reported me to the dean for clearing his trauma against his will. Why? I knew it was. He was on a free bursary. Nine grand. He had a dilemma. He's no longer traumatized, but he's still got to go and collect his uh, free bursary. He thought, well, I'd better get rid of him or else I'll be embarrassed. In uh, duplicate, once with the signing of the uh, sick note, because I've got these issues, and then another time to collect the, uh, the grant into his bank account. So I named it all and ended up walking away that night. So, I think I've answered the, <laughs> uh, the question as to the nature and the, the popular misconception, how we've been misled by the people who've been given the title as experts in resolving uh, mental illness. And of course, it's never mentioned that trauma is indeed the root cause because if they did, then they'd have to reveal that that's what they're actually we're dealing with here. And of course, then the natural question to be asked is why is the root cause, the trauma, not being targeted when it's actually being treated? In other words, they're trying to put a sticking plaster and give you a tablet for the very thing that's got side effects that creates the anxiety. So the anti, anti-anxiety tablets, the antidepressant tablets, or the anti-whatever it is feeling that you've got, it suppresses the stress molecule. So it suppresses it, and when it wears off, strangely enough, they have to give up the dosage because it comes back twice as bad when they, uh, when they actually reduce the stress molecule, the targeting the wrong mole molecule instead of targeting the feeling, the stress feeling or the, the anxiety feeling, they're actually targeting the molecular structure in the DNA, which suppresses it and then brings it back. And when you do that, it comes back twice as bad, particularly if you've got the same symptoms conveniently as side effects in the same drug which means you're completely oblivious to the fact that you're being given a, a, a tablet which keeps you locked into the same feeling. And then when it's being suppressed, it wears off, it comes back twice as bad. So you've then, in a 40-year at least, guaranteed chronic diagnosed. Diagnose means two guesses, which activates the prefrontal lobe into believing that it's got a problem because this prefrontal lobe only responds to the expert in the room because it's the rational mind. So it tries to understand and it submits to the perceived, assumed and presumed authority. That's the rational mind for you. And they know that because they know how the mind works. So they know how to brainwash it. So as a consequence, everybody who's put through the psychiatric paradigm or the th therapeutic paradigm of therapy is under the illusion that they're being treated to the best of their interests when they're not. It's serving the Rockefeller pharmaceutical, putting a spell, pharmaceutical semantic true meaning is a spell on humanity harming the human race and he his motives were really sinister he had to he set out to discredit all the natural god-given plants herbs on the planet which resolve from hemp to dandelion which cures all the other ailments most of them anyway the dandelion it's got a, a plethora of uh if you're to do your research it was i think it cures one of them is curing cancer because it rehydrates the 
dehydrated cells, which in a um, in the body, as, as Otto Heinrich Warburg had proved in the my, 1920s microbiologist Nobel uh, Prize winning uh, microbiologist proved that cancer is caused by a dehydration of the cells in an, in an acidic environment, gut caused by an acidic diet and the stress and the fear in society and the mind's response to it dehydrates certain parts of the body and the cells, which is why some people get cancer in this part of the body as opposed to another part. It's just the dehydration of the cell. And the, he proved that alkaline water or an alkaline diet completely eradicates. It's impossible for the cells to dehydrate because alkaline foodstuffs, such as a green leafy veg, and your um, alkaline water over 7.5 pH causes the, uh, the body to rehydrate the cells up to, I think it's 9.5 pH. It's more or less purifies the, the body and neutralizes any acidic uh, content in the body. And he's proved it, but they hid that as well conveniently because it didn't serve their uh, agenda of pill popping society and dumbing down the human race. So as a consequence, most people don't are completely oblivious to the idea that, uh, that the human mind and the body that inside the prefrontal lobe cortex, once it repeats the thoughts and, and the, uh, the memories from the subconscious mind with the process I use and discovered how the mind holds on to them thoughts and memories. And once you access it and bring it up from the subconscious mind, as we did with yourself in our session uh, a couple of weeks ago now, um, you're it's able to go back like a jukebox with it using a certain phrase goes back into the subconscious mind, retrieves the memory effortlessly like a GPS signal, or you're just pressing three numbers on a jukebox and it just retrieves that particular memory of that song or that, or that issue of without thinking, going to the memory of abuse, abandonment, as you, as you know, uh, I cover most of the uh, negative emotions that are linked to trauma from abandonment, anxiety, anger, right the way through betrayal, cheated on, depressed, envy, jealousy, fear, guilt, humiliation, insecurity, being lied to, manipulated, um, abused, of course, um, procrastination, all the negative emotions right the way through and the mind effortlessly as you, as you realise yourself without thinking just goes to it like that and you can but that's how this once you know the phrases which activate the mind to go from one part of the brain from conscious to unconscious and then when you're guided by myself which is all i am really i'm not a healer everybody tells me what a healer you are david i'm not it's that's the misconception from my point of view and my experience and and every client will tell you that i'm just guiding them to how their own mind and body and the breath which is the Holy Spirit, which has been hidden again. The breath is the omnipotent power which can dissolve the mind-body created dis-ease, which is the created and repeated program responses in the first seven years, which creates the bad feeling of the, of the hurt little boy or child, which we think we can't get rid of, which is why Aristotle said, show me the boy at seven, I'll show you the man, because he's unable to access the memories here and bring them up here but they knew that that's why aristotle said that and they hid the the greatest secret on the planet is that that they've hidden to us and the greatest problem on this planet is that trauma is the root cause of all mental and physical ailments and this this process of gods that i've consciously with the help of my friend who came back to save my life when i was feeling suicidal five years after the accident when I went to see his mum. She asked me a question which set me on a, a journey of understanding the question she asked me. And when I said to her, how are you? And she said, not good. Why did you survive? And 
my son died i went i don't know i don't know that answer that question it just kept repeating the mind just kept repeating it kept repeating it subconsciously because because i was supposed to i was supposed to work out my my soul's journey here was i worked out at some point in the journey i worked out there and was here to work out how the mind creates the bad feeling and how the breath and the mind combined can delete the bad feeling as you've experienced yourself can delete the bad feeling for good and it never comes back never comes back and it's so, it is such a beautifully simple process you know, oh, in terms of yeah. experiencing it it really was it was a lot to go through and a lot to bring up um, and the way i think about it any any trauma no matter what it is like any trauma that someone has experienced in their past and this was this is the thing that i found kind of funny was i remember we were going through all the different flavors of it and then we got to self-worth which for me was one of the the deeper ones and um i remember i can't remember exactly what i said but it was along the lines of historically which has been you know, quite a, a deep one for me and in that moment as i was experiencing what it felt like to have like a deep lack of self-worth i was i was laughing i was laughing in that moment because you were making me laugh <laughs> and and this is the thing that i want to hit home on a little bit which is that and and this I've, I've kept saying this after our interaction laughter really is the best medicine it really really is and when people were asking me how it was i said honestly i've got a stomach ache from laughing so much and they're like what what do you mean that makes no sense i'm like exactly it's not it's not sensical and um I forget where I was, I was going with that, but I wanted, I wanted to bring that in because I think another one of those misconceptions is that it has to be an unpleasant experience, whereas actually it was so enlightening. And I would love, um, obviously you've worked with thousands of people that you've helped with this, and you were just saying before we got into camera, recently doing a group session. What, what is it? Because you, you get a front row seat, right, where people are, as you say, doing their own healing with, with you guiding them, which by the way, I think is so empowering because it it shows that you know you can you can do it yourself. You don't you don't need somebody for the rest of your life. It's amazing. What's it like from your perspective seeing somebody? It's almost like the before and after, right? How, how do that how do people change once they become trauma free? <laughs> Interestingly, it's, it's an endless feeling of feeling blessed, having my cup totally topped up and seeing in my mind's eye the before and the after. after. So when you see somebody who said, I've, I've lost all this weight and you see the two pictures in my mind's eye, that's what I see all the time. I was at the event at the weekend um, that I mentioned before we started recording uh, with Charlie Ward and all the, the truth movement. <laughs> it was bit on the night before at, um, at the house where we all met up to sort of last minute arrangements for the itinerary, etc. Just talk things through. One of the guest speakers, I didn't recognize her name. It was instead of Smith, it was Jones. I'll keep the confidentiality like that. And it's she came in and went, oh, Shoot, Dave, it is you. And I'm like, oh, What the hell's this? And she kissed me on the cheek. And uh, she said, She was, and I said, I said, uh, I'm sorry, I don't, don't recognize you. She said, You won't do, will you? you you've seen thousands. And I said, Yeah, th thanks for understanding. I said, Put me out of my misery. Who the hell are you? She went, You saw my mother first. And I went, who and i said what? and she just said it's it's such and such and i went oh yes it's that and that she went yes i went oh my god and this lady was a fair size and 
she explained to me that she'd lost 60 pounds in seven months. She was, a, she was desperate to lose the weight. She was told she only had a few months to live. And we cleared the, the cravings for the food because she'd start cooking at 12 midday and wouldn't stop eating, picking all day until eight o'clock. And then she had afters. She said, I don't believe it, what you've done. My mother now only eats healthy meal and she intimately fasts the rest of the time. She's not the same person. She's not got the same emotional responses. It's like I'm living with a different mother. And I went, I know, in answer to your question, my mind went flip, flip, and it just flipped it. The before and the after. The woman who was crying, David, I don't think I can do this, David. I can do it because we had a catch up with her. And I think we had a couple of catch ups because she, it was a really, really ingrained, well malinated in thought process that was there. And we, because of her perseverance and her soul's contract with, with me, she just kept coming back and she went, David, it really worked for me. And in answer to your question, I just had this fixed grin every time I saw her and we just smiled at each other. And she just, she just kept coming past me during the event. She went, you're still amazing every time. So and that's in answer to your question. That's what it's like. A permanent top up on, on feeling good. It's just incredible. It's um, and, and I, I, lo I love that you gave that example of a woman losing weight because this was also for me a um, another sort of belief shift that I had, which is that the trauma is, you know, it's it's kind of a, a trapped emotion or a recurring thought pattern. Whereas at the end of our session, I can't remember what we were going through, but I suddenly remembered. I had this phobia of needles for the longest time where I would just pass out. And I was like, oh, yeah. It was, it was literally, this is what it felt like. It was like, oh, yeah, I've got that phobia. Let's just clear it real quick. And I've had this for years. And within like two minutes, I no longer, literally, I said to you, my hands would start, my whole body would start sweating just thinking about it. And here I am talking about it as if it's nothing. And I bring that up because. It can really manifest in so many ways, whether it's a phobia of anything or you know, addiction to food or an addiction to smoking. And it's like there are so many industries built around all of these addictions, like you said at the start, and they can all be cleared in the same way. It's really just the same process for whatever the manifestation is. Mm. And so... It that, makes yeah, sense, that, doesn't it, Ibrahim? It makes sense that if once you discover that the root cause is the mind's repeated thoughts about a bad memory that creates a le an electromagnetic connection we know is our feelings that's negative, that's lodged in either any part of our body, but mainly in the sacral root or solar plexus the lower based emotions the guilt the shame the embarrassment etc the, the negative emotions it, it just stands to reason if the mind can create the problem as a chosen as a chosen life lesson to come here as a soul a breath a spirit and once we wake up to the mind living in the machine it comes in and can omnipotently, with its mystical, magical effects of its essence of the breath coming in, once it's say, and you ask the mind's permission to open sesame, keys of Enoch, do you want to delete that bad feeling created by those thoughts and memories? And then the next thing you say to my random, does that make sense? But most people say, Oh, yes, because the machine knows if it says no, it doesn't make sense. And you breathe in about five or six times afterwards, keeping your bloody mouth shut, then you won't be able to get the bad feeling back. 
then it's game, set and match to the Hayoka and to the soul who's achieved part one of his life purpose, which is to come here as a soul, to live in a body, to come here in Satan's den and wake up humanity to how it really works. So we can't be enslaved to our lower based emotions as Satan intended us to do. Beautiful. Um, I would love to ask you uh, one final question to, to fully wrap up, um, which is if we project forward, uh, so much so that it's your, your final day on this planet in, in this incarnation, however, whatever your beliefs are, um, and you've, you've made, you've come here, you've fulfilled your soul's mission, you've achieved all the things you wanted to achieve, um, you can't leave behind anything physical to you know, your loved ones or the people you care about. However, you can leave them with one piece of wisdom, one, one piece of advice. What would you leave them with? <laughs> the legacy of humanity and the power of humanity is in knowing that you are not your mind. You are not your body. You are your breath, which leaves the physical realm when you go back home. And the, the process that I'm leaving behind, if it's in every will, if it's in every ethical God, godly school and organization and every household, then my job is done on this planet. We're free and God's in charge again on the planet. That is my legacy, which I talk about daily to random people when we've cleared their stuff. So what's your legacy as a sound engineer? Oh, I don't think it's, I don't think that's, I don't think it's possible, is it? Mm, interesting. Mm. And as that sound engineer on the weekend discovered, I think there is a legacy anyway. I think there is, my friend, yes. Yeah. When you ask the right questions, Ebs, once you ask the right questions that you really want the answer to, the universe, God, people around you vibrate and go, here you go. How about this one for an answer? The one that you never considered. And that's how I discovered with the help of loads of different people who just kept repeating the same thing. Spirit, breath. How the hell am I going to delete this bad feeling? I ended up asking, oh, I need to get rid of this bad feeling. How the hell is it created? And the number of times people would say, when you get your breath back, love, or then I'd be rehearing synchronistic, coincidental, the same. What the hell, Mike and the mechanics? Well, we're going on up to the spirit in the sky. That's where we're going to go when we die. And it was just like constant same message. And if you pay attention, to the questions you really want the answer to, you can resolve the other problems on this planet that some of us have come here to resolve. So in answer to your question, that's what I want. I want people to remember that that's the legacy of the Hayoka, and it will never ever be hidden again by Satan on this planet. Beautiful. Thank you so much, David. You are such just a beacon of light and such a, and such a true gift. Really, you are. I mean, Thank you. Incredibly grateful that our paths crossed and that this gets to ripple to other souls in this beautiful planet that we're on. Um, can, if people want to reach you or find out more, what's the, what's the best way for them to do that? Oh, it's email, davidianrogers at gmail.com because I answer everyone individually because sometimes people are referred to me because the, refer, the refer, referral person has put them in touch with me because they, they don't want to have to deal with that person anymore and it's only fair that that person knows what they're <laughs> what they're coming up to with me when they're 
because I, I make sure that that person is ready and I've got their soul's permission. So David Ian Rogers at gmail.com and they can have a look at my website, which is www.davidianrogers.com. Um, they can look at um, my videos there and they see what guide to healing or healer or therapist, whatever you want to call this process by the practitioner, what therapist goes live and offers videos. That's how you do it. And if they can vicariously clear it themselves without seeing me, yay, job done, as far as I'm concerned, because the sooner we get to us, as many of the billion, the billion that's left on the planet that's not being <clears throat> taken care of by other people with their uh, jabs and uh, whatnot, which is being hidden, um, the better. The more we can sort of heal by, because this process is a self-healing technique. You don't need me. And I say that. Some, some will. But if we can narrow it down to the ones who just need a little bit Bit more guidance from me, which is that's all I am really a guide to God's um, healing process. That's all it is. It's a self healing technique and epitomized in the, and I'm not biblical in any way, shape, or form, but it's been quoted to me in the, uh, in the text that it's Matthew 12 23, I think, which is healer, heal thyself. Blind Pharisee, when you clean the cup on the inside, the mind and the body the cup and the dish on the inside blind pharisee and the people will see on the outside by looking at you on a on an interview randomly when they see me on charlie ward oh my god it's him i don't know why i need to book in with him but oh my god he's just said he's healed himself of all these addictions all these issues and he's just demonstrated it oh my god it has to be him and the crying 10 minutes into the video and then they see the demonstration and go oh my god i have to book in now having only thought they were just surfing the, the net randomly for something interesting to fill in their time because they've been conditioned into believing that there was no answer to their mental illness it was something they had to put up with because the um prescribed um antidotes were were uh, sort of ineffective at the very least and the best they could offer was a, a state of really i just want relief from the pain so give me a pill anything doctor oh i'll just have to have another glass of wine da 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 da, da. yeah so yeah that's answer that question i guess and um that'll all be linked below so at the very least go and go and go and go and watch the video so you can really experience it yourself and just see it and get a sense of it and actually feel it right because you've gone into the mind now you feel the call in go to actually feel it in the body and that's the that's a beautiful next step again david just got to thank you once more for, for what you do and um thank you yeah it's, it's been it's been magic <laughs> until next time ebes thank you <laughs>